Hey, friends. Wayne over here at the Ram Man Inc. Don't forget the ink. Today we're going to have a quick video, maybe one of two, on the new uh, Dana 44 disc brake kit. Now I'm real excited about this because, you know, uh, uh, some of you may know that we came out with the uh, D100 disc brake kit about five years ago, about 2013. Being in the Mopar world for decades and designing and developing disc brake kits front and back for most all of those which you see today. Uh, people kept asking us about the trucks. Since we introduced those, of course, we have been bombarded over the years about the old boys with the W100s. The four-wheel drives of the 50s and 60s and early 70s. And of course, we had no solution for them. And we told many of them that, uh, hey, go get you. Get, the quickest thing to do is an axle swap out of us mid 70s or 80s, Dana 44. And, you know, these are Lee Spring buggies and, you know, go that route. Well, we now have a super easy. Super affordable kit now for the Dana 44 front axle. And here's what it consists of, my friends. It's pretty simple. So, we have the caliper bracket. This ain't something that you gonna do in your backyard after six pack or in the shop. We got a new style GM caliper. This is not rebuilt from the local O'Reilly. We have what I'm going to call it is a debris nullifier. And we have the rotor. Now, pretty simple. Not a whole lot of parts. You get to reuse the fasteners. So, a lot of people don't really know how four wheel drive hubs are held on. They are normally held on by two nuts that look like this. And you can get the sockets that fit these. They're usually not tight. Not real tight like a normal nut. And they're generally separated by a washer. Gotta go over that. We get lots of questions. Many people, more so today, buy our kits and components and they have no business none whatsoever of attempting to do what they're going to do when i ask a client doing a disc brake swap front and back on a 70 cuda a banker out of new york spending lots of money and I ask him do you know what slip joint pliers are he responded no but I'll google it if you're one of those people you probably ought not to be doing this even though it's really simple so first thing you got to do is you got to get your hub off and once you get your hub off, that's what it looks like. It's held on by these two uh, uh, spindle nuts. 
and the hub will come off and right behind there you're gonna find the backing plate on your Dana 44 and I don't care whether you got a GM a Ford or a Dodge you are gonna find your drum brake backing plate it's held on by six bolts right there so what you're gonna do is you're gonna undo that mess get your drum off undo that mess and get this off this has the same pattern this goes on first with six bolts, you get to reuse your original bolts and washers. You get to reuse your original bolts and washers. Yeah. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to knock the old studs out of your rotor. How do you do that? You go bang, 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 and you knock them out. That's the quick and easy way. Or you take all afternoon or several days and take it down there and have some uh, person uh, press them out with a press and uh, lots of drama, expense, pain in the ass, going there, getting back. Most dudes know how to press out studs. You used to have to change studs all the time in the 60s and 70s to knock them out. Anyway, besides the point, getting off on a tangent. But I'll get, you know, five questions a week, phone calls, I mean a month. How do I get my studs out? Okay. So, rotor goes on the back of the original hub. So, we give you new studs to put this on. So, now we get to turn around. Voila, friends. Check that out. Bracket goes on. Debris nullifier. <laughs> Seal protector. And then the caliper goes on. Now, if you will notice, caliper is in approximately the 3 o'clock position. And our new GM caliper bolts right up. Pin style caliper. And our hose attaches right there. And if you notice, it's absolutely fantastic. It is literally that easy, my friends. Now, video number two, I think. So, remember now, you got a bearing, bearing, and your hub slides on. Uh, maybe we won't need number two, but some people are going to get bored, and they're going to move on, and uh, of course, they may miss something, and uh, that's all fine and dandy. I'll try to speed it up. I know that the whole effing world this is in a big old hurry. Now, shit. Yeah, I'm gonna have a seal over there too. So, anyway, here we go. I got this bad boy together. Bigger bearing goes on the inside. We've got a seal. Of course, you can replace these things. I'll get some. I'll get some calls and stuff. Well, can I replace my burns? Well, yeah. Well, which ones do I get, Wayne? Well, why don't you start off with the ones that come out of there? Yeah. You guys think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. You would be surprised. Okay. So I got that on, right? Then we need to put us another bearing on. Make sure we get him pushed down all the way. Some of these have pins, some of them don't have pins for different design. That one's got a little pin, captures this little washer that goes in between, and yada, yada, yada. But anyway, for instructional purposes. So, I believe that you guys can understand that we put it back on exactly how we took it off. Now, 
back to putting this thing together that's what makes it so simple so you're putting on those six bolts you just replacing your uh, little uh, drum brake setup right and here comes mr caliper mr caliper slides on just like that and then you have your two alignment slash guide pins number one Look at that. This was designed for monkeys to do. Monkeys with a middle school education and a little bit of skills around the shop. Modern, high performance disc brakes for your old Dana 44 axle. I'm going to repeat, to our knowledge, this fits GM, Dodge, Ford, International, you name it. What a cool little gizmo. God bless you. God bless America. And if you have any questions, watch it again and turn the TV off. Bye.